part three of our mock-up of our 1942 Harley. And today I'm going to go through brakes, the wheel, hubs, and just show you what a good one looks like, what a bad one looks like on various different pieces. So here's the here's the one that we took off the bike. And if you remember on the last video, I was talking about the rivets. And this is the rivets that were done on this one. I wasn't too happy with them. I, I just, they don't look right. You know, they, the heads almost look like it was an old nail or something. This is what they should look like. A lot cleaner. Then you look at the dust ring. This is that this is this piece here. So this goes around and you can see it's split over here. It's bent, you know. You want to have this really nice and smooth like this one so that it doesn't rub on your your backing plating and just make noise. One of the things you're going to want to look at too is you're going to want to look at the gears on here and it doesn't look bad. You can see there's a little bit of wear right on the edge here. And these one, this one's really nice. You know, so this one, um, when I got it, it was painted on the inside. So we've had to take all the paint out of there. You know, there's a little bit left to do. You don't want paint. You don't want to be, you don't want to paint on the inside of your brake drum. So when you hit the brakes, what's going to happen is all that paint's going to go onto your brake shoe and it's just going to clog them up and it's going to reduce your braking power. Here's a new sprocket. This one doesn't look too bad. It's not horrible. I've seen them where these curve. And that's when they get really thin, when they get really pointy, it's time to replace. But this one will get replaced because I'm not too confident on these so-called rivets. So now here's the brake backing plates. So one of the things you're going to want to look at, you know, does it have all the components? This one is missing this arm. That's your brake arm that uh, actuates when pulled. It actuates your brake shoes. And this is your Speedo drive. This goes right in. And one of the things you want to look at is like this one's really nice. You can just see how nice and square hasn't been beaten up. And you can see this one's been banged around a bit. So not horrible, but you just want to, you know, if you can, you want to buy the best you can. So again, something's, some grinding's been going on here. I'm not really sure why. This one we still have to put the uh, brake shoes on. Um, one of the things you want to look at, so here's your... That's your Speedo Drive. Um, there's a whole process to getting these on also onto these shafts. The new ones are all plastic. The originals were brass, and I haven't seen one in a long time. So the plastic ones, what you want to do is you want to heat up the shaft when you put it through, and it kind of melts its way through. Otherwise, what will happen is you'll, you'll just crack these because they're just – it's such a fine piece. So you want to heat them up. That's what I've done in the past. And they just slide on. They melt just enough to get that shaft in. Again, you want to look at, here's your rear axles. You just want to look at the overall condition. So this one, I believe this might have been new old stock when I got it. Really nice shape. Look at the welds here. You can see how this is all um, symmetrical. You look at this one, it's been welded up here. It's bent, you know. It's still a good axle, you know, we just got to address it. But it's all these little things that when you're buying a project that, you know, if you're educated, you can make a better, you make a better deal on it. You can maybe get a, a bit better price on it. And you're just, you need to look at all these little things because they all add up. So the wheels are probably, the, the hubs are probably your most expensive part of the of the wheel um because of uh you know finding the original ones are now you know not cheap but what you want to make sure and you know the one thing that very few people actually show when they sell it is the condition of 
of the uh, the hub. You know, they'll sell you it. And, oh, it's a nice uh, it's a nice hub, but they never show you the the race. This race, you know, it's just it's it's garbage. You know, um, you can just see how rough it is and you can feel all those with your nail so that's the one thing i would say is if you ever get a chance and that's the that's the side that should be the best side because um again it's the other side is protected by um from water from with the brake with the brake in in place so here's the second side and you can just see this side's usually really nice. So you can just see how beautiful that is, nice and clean. You know, nothing really stands out. So here on this really ugly hub, even this side's not horrible. I mean, it's it's okay. Like you could you could use it, but it's the opposite side that is uh is toast so anytime you're gonna buy a star hub before you spend any money on it tell the seller can you pull the bearings out i want to and clean this this uh this spot up here you want to look at that that's gonna that that'll tell you right there if it's worth buying or not one of the next things i'm going to show you is the roller bearing sleeve so this is your inner race that your bearings they it rides on. So the hub is the outer bear outer race. This is your inner race. So one of the things that when you're looking at these wheels and you're rebuilding them is you gotta look all on the top here. Look really close because what you might find is this. You can see it's really hard to see it. There's a crack right there. You might be able to see it. There's a crack there. You can see how this is where the the gasket, the cork gasket, would be sitting. It's uh, it's got some wear on it. And then you look at the rest of it. And again, this is the brake side. This is the opposite side. You can just see the difference, and you see how it's so almost like you can see where the bearing was sitting, and then the moisture got in. And it caused issues. So again, that's why this one's junk. But I keep it just to make a wheel. If I need to just roll something around, I always mark the wheels. So here's one. I looked at it pretty close. There's some little marks on it. But it's not too bad. You could use it. Um, on this bike, I'm on this mock-up, I'm going to... Put them back together. What I do is I mark down. I have a, I create a binder for each bike, kind of idea, notes. And I'll mark on the wheel, um, you know, if it's rebuilt or not. So this one, it's, I'm not going to rebuild it. Um, who knows what will happen between now and then. I might find better wheels. Um, who knows? I just don't want to waste uh, bearings and stuff on this wheel when I might change it. Here are some of the parts that... You know, collected over the years, and that you use on rebuilding these. So you got different uh, different oversizes on your bearings, and so when you're putting these things together, you do not mix your bearings up because these are oversized. Like I go from stock to uh, ten thou over, and one of the things on this wheel that wasn't there was a gasket. You got to dry fit them for your spacing and your tolerances everything's gonna be done dry and then when you're said and done then you put the grease in and now all this is explained in your manuals um there's so many different components here you have to look at um one of them is is these spacers you gotta look on the edges here and you'll just look at you know if it's war or not you know this one's kind of ugly there's a couple marks there look on the inside star piece you're going to see right in there you're going to see like marks 
And what happens is these are made to go in here, but they're made not to move. So if you can see how much that moves, that would be need replacing this, replace that, replace all your, your shims and your corks. You know, almost everything gets replaced at one point, you know, once the, they wear out. One of the other things you want to look at is on this is sometimes there's grooves from the cork seal. They get grooved. They get uh, just marked up. So, again, re re rebuilding these wheels isn't cheap. Um, you know, probably going to cost you uh, between $100 and $200. Depends if you need a bearing sleeve and, you know, what size, what oversize you need. So if you're going to do them, take your time, you know, watch a few videos and, and just uh, look for signs of, of wear. Look for cracks, look for everything. But it all starts with getting a good wheel. Don't let the seller, whoever's selling you that wheel, if it's off a bike, you know, if you're just buying a hub or you're buying a wheel, make them take that bearing out. Show them the bearing races. Don't buy anything that's junk because I'm sure there's lots of guys who sell them or whoever, or they might not know it's junk, but they just, they haven't looked in it. Tell them you want to see that bearing race. If you're wondering why I'm telling you all this or showing you this is because Part of what I want my channel to be is educational. I want to encourage others to restore old bikes and it's, I want you to learn. I want you, I want to teach you guys what I know. And there's a reason why I know is because I've bought some junk ones, you know, for every, I'm going to say for every 10, you're going to get three really cherry ones. You know, you look at this one, just beautiful inside on both sides that's a good hub you know um you look at this this is new old stock look at this point here it's not wore out like right in there that's where those those spacers go so again i've bought i've bought lots of junk over the years you know i've got uh three five ten eleven twelve uh hubs just lying around and you know four four or five are probably good so one of the other things i wanted to show you is because i just remembered i had this hub and when i first got it the bearing races didn't look too bad but right here you look at the uh the holes where the there's one really yeah, right here so this is where the brake drum gets attached to. And you can just see on here just how oblong they are. So the only thing you could use, like I would never put a brake on this. If you're building like a racer or something, you didn't want a front brake, you could probably get away with using this hub. But for, you know, everyday use going down the road, um, I wouldn't use it. It's a, uh, I wouldn't put a brake on here because it's going to chatter back and forth. It's going to move back and forth. And, um, you know, it could cause a failure of some sort. I just wouldn't use it. Thought I'd just show you that. Another thing to look at is you look at um, the holes for your, where your screw's in. Look at the holes on where your spokes go. See if they're not flared, you know, or ripped or, or just, you know, oblong because of a loose spoke. You know, you got to really, you know, these things are going for, you know, 150 250 300 bucks Depends how minty they are. So save your money and, uh, you know, buy a good one. It'll save, it'll save you money in the end. But look closely at everything. So the next step on this wheel that we're going to put back together is just, just going to grease it. All the components are look pretty good. Um, I'm not rebuilding it at this point. And what I'll do is I'll just mark on the wheel that, um, you know, the condition of the bearing sleeve, the condition of the hub, which is the most important. And then, um, again, this is for mock-up purposes. If I was going to, if this was the final restoration point, 
where this is the final time this is going back together, I would rebuild it, new bearings and all new components. And then, uh, you know, I would be very confident of the, the, the wheel going down the road. The Star Hub came out somewhere around 1936. It was used on knuckles, pans, um, pan shovels, 45s, big inch flatheads. So there's quite a few of them out there. Just make sure you get a good one. There are a few different types also. And one is a stepped hub, which are quite valuable nowadays. Those are the earliest versions. So we got the wheel all done. It's all greased. In our next video, we'll put the wheel back together as far as the brake components. And then we'll put it onto the, the, uh, the frame for mock-up. And uh, continue on with the build. So we'll be going into uh, episode four. And I uh, hope you're enjoying this series. It's just, you know, trying to educate everyone, trying to give you some uh, insight on what it takes to actually build these bikes, ride them. You know, I love this stuff. This is lots of fun for me. So I'm having a good time. I hope you are. And uh, like and subscribe and watch for uh, episode four.